my friends. Namaste. You have arrived at a very special place. In times past, the Rashas of Anandapur brought exotic animals here, including magnificent birds from all around the world. Rashas are long gone, but the birds remain. Birds of many nations, many species. Journey with us into a world that until now we've only observed from a distance. A world that fills the sky above with grace, color, and light. Until now, you may have ignored this vanishing world, but the free people of Anandapur use this ancient gathering place to promote the conservation effort you see going on all around the village. This is no fairy tale, but a true story in which you play an important part. Enjoy these beautiful creatures as they soar into your heart on their flight, their flight of wonder. Flights of Wonder, my name is Bobby, and I am just one of a whole team of researchers that was sent here to Anandapur to take care of and study all of the amazing birds you see flying around. I gotta tell you, this right here, this, this is why I love my job. Because I get to come out here and I get to share all of these amazing birds with all of you and let them show you their very cool natural behaviors. Just like this guy right here, his name is Miles. And Miles, he's a type of bird called a trumpeter hornbill. But trumpeter or hornbills, they are found way out in the forests of Africa. And they like to eat things like fruits and insects, but they love to catch flying insects right out of the air. Hi. We're going to show you what this looks like with the help of this ring. Let's pretend that this is a big juicy bug and it's flying through Africa. When Miles spots it, I like to finish it just like that. All right, Miles, let's show what I'm talking about. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three, go! Yes! Did you get it? Yeah. Hey, you got it! Excellent! Very good! Who wants to try that? That looks like a lot of fun. No, 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 no. How about you and this great shirt with the riding? You want to try it? I'm going to toss up the great you fly up and catch it. You ready? You are ready. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't make kids fly. Come over here. What's your name? Will. Will. Very nice to meet you. Can you stand right here for me? You're going to face all you new adoring fans. And here's your grade. When I say go, you give a nice underhand toss straight up as high as you can get into that big triangle, okay? Ready, set, go! Yes! Yes! Perfect, yes! Come on, that was excellent. High five, you can go back to the team if you like. Give you guys a applause for our volunteer. She did a great job, and Miles. So good. That was amazing, but that is exactly why there are no more flying grapes in Africa. <laughs> they don't stand a chance with Trump and Hornbills just like you, buddy. Yeah, good job. Very good. Miles, our trumpeter horn bell. He is so good. If you like him, you're going to love the rest of our birds. Because our birds, they are from all over the world. And some are big, and some are small, and some, they're a little strange. But they'll have specially designed adaptations. All right, there world. you are. Now, this is you. the second time today uh, I have lost this tour group. So I think we better have a little review, people. Yep, a little review. I am the tour guide. This is the flag. Excuse me. You follow the flag. Stay with me. That's how a tour works, people. Uh, excuse me. You gotta stay with the guy. Hi. 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 Can I help you? No. <laughs> All right now, people. I got a fast pass to a very educational film called Marsupial Madness. Or, my mom's pouch is my couch. <laughs> it's about kangaroos. You're still here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I just started a show for everybody. Oh, so. good for you. 
<laughs> Who are you? Oh, I am the god of all things tourist. I am go on a... <laughs> Joe! Get out of town, that's totally cool. <laughs> You're Guano Joe. Yeah. You're the world famous traveler and explorer of that Guano Joe. Well, I'm a tour guide now. This is my runaway tour group right here. But this is so cool. This is awesome. My name is Bobby. Well, Bobby, nice to meet you. I'm one of the researchers. Oh, well, I'm sorry I interrupted your research show. Oh, that's okay. You know what? But how about you stay for the show? Stay for the show. Sure, my tour groups here. Yeah, we can stay. Yeah, it'll be fun. And you can be like the celebrity guest for the show. Say what? You can be up here with me. Be in the show. Be in the show. Good. Oh, that sounds like yeah. Fun. Sure, I'll do that. What do I do? This is gonna be so cool, my show. He's gonna help you with all of the birds. It's and you are Whoa, 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 whoa. There are birds in the show. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a three-flight bird show. That should be flying all over the theater. Are they angry birds? <laughs> no, we can't say. We are really busy. I did not busy. know there were birds in the Wait, show. You were going to be a go, 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 go. Call it off. Call it off. Call it off. Get it away from me. Get it away. Why don't you It's just a chicken. It's a Himalayan attack chicken. No, it's not. Are you okay? No. You need to know something. I have Bob. What is Bob? Bob. Fear of birds. I am terrified of birds. What is that? Oh, it's alright, this is a collar agreement. His name is Paul. No, and Paul is actually a flag. Uh, that's my tour no, flag. Oh, give it back. Tour group, don't follow the flag. <laughs> Where's my flag, Bobby? I can't reach it. Oh, no, I'm sorry, do you have another one? No, I don't have another one. I need that, Bobby. My tour group is not going to follow this. <laughs> alright, um, well, we can take it as a sign that you should stay. No, you've got birds here. But we can't. No, he's back. He's back. Okay. <laughs> oh, can you go? Paul. Paul, oh, that's my stick! <laughs> took my flag and my stick. What does he work for the IRS? <laughs> and you should just stay for the show, Guano Joe. You've got birds here. No, you, should, you should say, who wants Guano Joe to stay? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, alright. I'll tell you what, we'll stay, but under one condition. There's one thing I know everybody would like to see. A little bird. Yeah. Riding a bicycle. That's always cute. And it's cute, but we, we actually focus on natural behavior, so we do. What's more natural than a bird on a bicycle? <laughs> it's not something that you see in the wild. I've seen it. Really? Of course I have. When? In the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these people saw it. Too. <laughs> How about I bring out something better? I can bring out a really smart parrot. Okay, if you're gonna bring, bring a parrot, parrot out here, I have to stand at a distance or hide. I can't be close to a bird. You need me to hide you? Yes. From the parrot. It's a bird. It's a bird. Okay. okay. Uh, you can go by the tree. That tree? Sure. Will I be safe? Yeah, birds hate trees. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, for everybody else out there, how many of you have ever heard of a talking parrot before? Ooh, a lot of you. Actually, you might not realize it, but talking for a parrot, that's a form of a natural behavior. See, what they're actually doing is they're copying or they're mimicking the sounds that they hear in their environment. Thanks, Courtney. When they live out in the wild, they learn to mimic the sounds that their parents are making. When they live in your home, they mimic human sounds. And it starts to sound a whole lot like they're actually talking. But this is Groucho. He's a yellow Amazon parrot. Do you want to tell everybody out here hello? Yeah, he's a very good mimicker. But you know what Amazon parrots? They live in the rainforest of Central America. But Groucho, he has lived with people his entire life. And he has learned to take that mimicry to a whole different level. You want to show him what I'm talking about? Here we go. So he is one in a million. He actually knows the lyrics to seven different songs. Wow. Very cool. Who wants to hear another song today? Yeah. Absolutely, guys. We have a great crowd out here today. Can you give everybody out here a great big kiss? Good stuff, that kiss. I agree. All right, Groucho. Boy, good stuff. You got six more songs to choose from. Why don't you pick one of those, okay? Here we go. 
show you one more. It's a crow this time. I'll be over here. <laughs> Alright, let's meet Harley. Harley's a pine crow. They're found out in Africa. An incredibly smart bird. Let's show you just how smart he is with the help of another volunteer. How about an adult volunteer this time? An adult with a dollar bill. A lot of hands just went down. There's no hands up. How about you, ma'am, in the gray shirt? You got a dollar? Actually, you can stand up for me and take out your money. Fives and tens were great. Are you guys all excellent? You can hold that straight out to your side, just like this in your fingertips. We're gonna see what uh, Harlow would like to do after he's done cleaning up the stage. Are you ready, buddy? Okay. I think there's a dog that waiting for you. Right out there. I dropped a piece of food. These guys, they're actually scavengers out in the wild. Really? And they like to make sure that everywhere is nice and clean and they're immediately here before they go somewhere else. That's actually why they're so successful. Oh. We want to show what we do with all the dollar bills we find. Do you want to go out there yourself? Yeah. Go to the rock. And then right up that way, there we go! What do you do with the dollar bills you find? You grab it, it comes to me, and then it goes. There we go. That's right. Okay, it goes in the pocket, very good. Excellent job, Harley. You did great, man, thank you. What's this $20 bill? No, I'm kidding. We're gonna return your money, okay? Stand up one more time. Arm out to the side, palm facing the sky. He's gonna put it in the palm of your hand. You just wrap your fingertips around it before it blows away. Okay? Here we go. Palm of the hand, for me, please, Harley. Right over that way. He sees you. There we go. Good job. Wrap your hand around it. Big round of applause for Harley. Here we go. That's something you don't see every day. It's very true. Yeah, money back at a theme park. <laughs> <laughs> that only proves all birds are smart. <laughs> well, not all birds are as smart as Harley. They're not. No. But I do want to show you what I'm talking about with the help of some more volunteers. Do you want to pick up this? You want me to pick up? Yeah. What do you want? Two people. Two. With Two. cameras or video cameras, okay? Cameras. If you have a camera, hold it up really high. And if Juan or Joe picks you, you want to meet him over there at the far side. Of the hold stage. your camera up high. You're going to come all the way over here. Pam right over there with the glasses. All the way over here. You start the Mickey Mouse. Right over here. Excellent. Big Juan or Joe right over that way on the ground level. By the lady in the raincoat. But for the rest of you, I know you've heard about this bird before because I am talking about the wise old what? Owl. Owl, exactly. Now, owls are not necessarily as intelligent as we have been led to believe, but they have some incredible adaptations to help them survive in the wild, and I'm going to show you their ability to fly almost completely silently with the help of some of our volunteers. Let's keep this island right here nice and clear because this is our rapid runway. Make sure your camera's on, you're ready to. You do not want to miss a thing. You get your camera? That is important. <laughs> but not only do they have incredible powers of light, they have vision that's three to four times better than ours during the daytime. At night, even better than that. Plus, they have incredible senses of hearing, and they're actually able to hunt their food by just hearing alone. It is amazing. All right, why don't you, it looks like we're going to have our volunteers in just one second. We have Fabrizio and Carol. Give them a big Hi. round of applause. Come on over here, Fabrizio and Carol. Is that right? Okay, excellent. Come on over here. You two are going to have a seat for me on this crate. You're going to face your tour group and get your cameras turned on, but leave them down. I'm going to tell you what happens first. So go ahead and have a seat for me. Just like that. There we go. All right. Now, your owl is going to join us from this window right over here. All right. Okay. He's going to fly nice and low all the way back to Courtney back there. You see Courtney? All right, now this is where your cameras come in. When he's on that stump, you want to raise your cameras up and point them in this direction. Focus them in this area, okay? He's going to fly right through here towards you. When he's right here, you want to take your picture. 
right? That's when you want to snap the shutter, but then get out of the way before the impact. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's a member of this tree right behind you. Yeah, he almost never misses. <laughs> They're very excited. That's me, Quetty. Quetty is a milky eagle owl joining us from this window right here. Whoa. He's going to fly wow. all the way back to Courtney. He's big. He is very big. He's actually the largest species of owl you can find in Africa. Really? Third largest in the entire world. Wow. All right. Are you two ready? I think that Quetty is ready too. Here he comes. Whoa. Did you get it? No? <laughs> Well, come over here before you get something else, okay? You don't want to stand under a tail for too long. Yeah, stand right here for me. Get a couple more pictures of this beautiful bird. These birds are found in Africa, and if he was a female, he would be about a third larger than this. Wow. The females get bigger, but because he's a male, he is this size, but he's still incredibly beautiful. You guys were great volunteers. Big round of applause for them. You are welcome. Right over that way. Mauricio and Carol! You sound like a magic act. I love that. There we go. They were very brave. They were that very, bird is very big. He is very, very big. Do you want to walk your balance beam up to the window? Go ahead. Show him. Take your time. <laughs> it's only a 25 minute show. Does he have all. black eyes? You know, I'm really glad you asked that one on Joe. They do look like they're entirely black, but the oh. truth is, they're a really deep chocolate brown. Oh, really? So from far away, it looks like he has hardly any pupils at all. That's very cool. Oh, that was yeah. really cool. Yeah, excellent job. Yeah. Very My tour group was brave. Too. They were very brave. You brave. should be that brave. Yeah, I know. For this next bird, yeah, yeah. Wow. you should be brave for this because we have this. What is what is that? It's a little rubber lizard. That's a bird. This is not a bird. Oh, but it's okay. going to lead us into its natural behavior. Oh, okay. With your name, if you're okay with it. What, you're gonna call it Joe. I'm gonna call him Little Joe. Little Joe. That's little Joe the lizard. Okay. Okay. Now we're all gonna pretend that Little Joe. He lives out in the grassland in South America. He found a nice rock right here. He's basking in the sunshine. He's having a great day. He's not bothering anybody. Oh, when along comes Sluggo, the red-legged Sariyama. Now this is what I'm looking for. Oh! Wow. <laughs> this is what they do with rodents and reptiles that they want to eat. They find a nice hard surface, they swing back, and they fall right in. This, unfortunately, it puts an end to Little Joe. But it also breaks up all the bones, makes it nice and soft and squishy so that Sluggo can swallow him down in one great big juicy gulp. All right, one more Sluggo. You're doing a great job on the rock. Yes! Oh, that is what I was looking for. Wow. I'm going to rescue Little Joe. He's had a really hard day. Sluggo, you were amazing. Yes, you were. You right back that way. Sluggo, our red-legged Siriyama. What did you think of Little Joe and Sluggo? <laughs> They're quite a team. <laughs> yeah. um, you don't look too... Uh, oh, yeah, let's know the smaller bird. Okay, that's not that good. I should have brought that down earlier. Okay. Um, this hawk is going to fly all the way to the back of the theater. Whoa, 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 so whoa, gonna... whoa, 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 a hawk? Well, yeah. That's a bird of prey. Very good. Yes, yes, no, <laughs> these people do not want to see a hawk. Oh, who wants to see the hawk fly? <laughs> Oh, there you go. Wow. All right. It looks like we are almost ready. As soon as the flight happens, clear, we're going to meet Orion. He joins us from that window. He's going to fly all the way back to Courtney. There he is. And there he goes. Now, here are stops like Orion. They're found in the southwestern deserts of the United States. So, places like southern Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, that's where you're going to find birds like this one. But they're very unique among other birds of prey because they live and hunt in family groups. About three or four of them, they will team up together so they can take prey bigger than they ever could on their own. Something up to the size of a yeah. But they need that special edge for survival because about 75% of all birds are in the hatch in the wild. They're not going to make it past that very first year of life. Why? There's a lot of reasons for the joke. Sometimes it's due to things like habitat loss or starvation. But unfortunately, some people do shoot hawks just like a lion. I thought that was illegal. Here he comes, Courtney. That is illegal, and it's a good thing that it's illegal to shoot these birds because they control rodent populations. So everybody should have more hawks around. All right, here he comes. Whoa! Wow, that was cool. <laughs> that was amazing. If you duck, he flies lower. I forgot to mention that. Good job. Orion, our Harris hawk. Hawks are good hunters, huh? Oh, Guadalajara are great hunters. Really? Oh yeah, they're really good. A bird the size of that one, he can eat about 800 to 1,000 mice in just one year. Oh, that explains why we haven't had a mouse or a rat here in an octopore. Right, it's, it's, 
for the infestation. Yeah, but what yeah. Had, when was that? About a month ago. Was yeah, that's about right. Yeah, we have rats and mice seriously everywhere. We've been eaten away from. They were in our tents and our vehicles and our shoes in the morning. They were everywhere. That's really gross. It was really, really gross. But yeah. you know what? The hops, they came in, they took oh, care really? of the problem. And the owls, they take the night shift. Oh. It's 24 hour control. Yeah. Be glad you're here now. The rat problem's behind us. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea birds could be beneficial. And beautiful. Really? Absolutely. One of the most beautiful birds that you'll find on the African savanna. It's called crown crane. Just like the one He's joining us right over there with Donna Sue. Wow. All right, he's going to show off. There he is, his beautiful six foot wingspan as he flies the sea. Just watch his toes. Good job, everybody. This is Frazier. Frazier? Frazier Crane. <laughs> But crown cranes, they get that name from that tuft of golden feathers on the top of their head. It makes it look like they're wearing a crown. But they're really good to have on the savanna because they control insect populations, insects that could damage crops or even spread disease. Wow. Hey, why don't you? What? How about you feed the crane? No, 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 no. I want you feed him. He's big. No, you should feed the. Who wants Guano Joe to feed the crane? Woo! All right, all right, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. Yeah. What do I do? Make a bowl with your hands about waist time. Like this? Just like that. All right, okay. we're going to walk right over here to you. Yeah. He's going to eat out of the palm of your hand. Are you kidding me? It is. There's a pack. Oh, it's right here. Oh, I'm eating a bird. <laughs> oh, I'd love to see this guy out in the wilds of Africa running around with his buddies. That would be something. That would be a great sight to see. But unfortunately, that is a sight that's getting harder to find. Why? Well, crown crane numbers, they're declining in the wild due to things like habitat loss or poaching. Some people even put out poison for these birds. I can't imagine a world without beautiful creatures like this in it. Me neither, but that's why it's up to all of us to help protect them. And protect them we will. Right, folks? I have no idea we're so tough on birds out there. Absolutely. Life in the wild is not easy, but there are some bright spots on the conservation horizon, too. Well, tell us a bright spot. Ooh, how about the national symbol of the United States of America? The bald eagle, ladies and gentlemen, Guano Joe. Wow. This is hope. And hope is a living symbol of one of the greatest conservation success stories of our lifetime. At one point, bald eagle numbers were dropping so low, so fast, that future generations were most likely never going to be able to see a beautiful bird like hope out in the wild. But that is when something amazing happened. People began to take notice and they took chicken. action. Like we cleaned that. up waterways where bald eagles fish, and we stopped using a chemical pesticide called DDT, which led to this and many other birds declines off the water. People made the difference by cleaning up the environment? Oh yeah, absolutely, and our efforts paid off. Bald eagle numbers are rising, and they have been officially removed from the endangered species list. Hey, that's a great story, Bobby. It is an amazing conservation success story. Thank you so much, Eric, and thank you, Hope. But it also goes to show that we all have that power to help save wildlife. And it just starts by doing something important like cleaning up our environment. Well, I'm really glad you asked me to stay. Yeah. Well, I lost my flag and my stick, but I found Hope. <laughs> you fed a crane on your head. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool, cool right? Look! Like oh, is that what I think it is? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, um, you make a little crane bowl wherever you're on the rock. Right over here? Yes. Oh, did you miss it? It's over there, you dropped it. He was looking for some crane pellets I dropped before for the crane. There you go. Are you going to give that to me? Look at that! Look at that! You probably fed my... <laughs> Well, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> yes, it is, and you made a connection with the birds today, Joe. You know what? The world is our greatest gift, and it's up to all of us to preserve it. Absolutely. And we as humans, we are the only species on this planet with the ability to do that. It just takes simple things that you can do in your very own home, like conserving or recycling, even supporting conservation programs. All like Disney's Worldwide Conservation Fund at the end. Absolutely that, and other conservation programs that help us to save this planet for all of the beautiful animals that live here with us. Just like blue and gold macaws and green wing macaws, spectacled owls, like one over here with Kathy, mustache parakeets, oh, and one over here so with Karen, even chickens too. I've heard it said before that we have not inherited this planet from our parents, we're borrowing it from our children. 
brings the heart and spirit of all living creatures share a common connection. So on behalf of all the creatures up here, we'd like to leave you with this wish. May your hearts take flight and your spirits soar forever. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you so much. You were a great audience. If you'd like to come down to the front of the stage and take any pictures or ask any questions, you're more than welcome to do that. Other than that, have a great time with the rest of your day out in 9 to 4. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.